Hello and welcome to another video. Um, today we have a different setting. I am out of my dressing gown and I got half dressed and I wanted to do a sit down like talky advice video. Um, I know I usually do studio vlogs but I have a lot of other ideas of videos I want to make and I want to just share my, my you know, my, my knowledge. <laughs> So today's video, I'm going to talk about making t-shirts. I'm aware there are a lot of t-shirt videos out there on YouTube, but for me personally, when I was looking for videos on how to make t-shirts, I didn't really find any that were that helpful. A lot of them were based at people who hadn't even maybe started designing yet, didn't have a brand or anything like that. And if you are starting completely off like that, those videos are completely helpful and they're great to watch. Um, my video is actually based on from if you're already an established brand or you have a brand, you have your design, everything, and now you just want to go from your design to actually selling your t-shirt. So that's what this video is about. So if that's the stage you're at, stick around and find out how. So step one for designing a t-shirt is obviously making the image, the picture whatever you want on a t-shirt and the second part is deciding size and placement so basically you need to decide what you want your t-shirt to look like so there are a few standard types of t-shirts that people make it could be a small design on the front like where a pocket would be it could be a large front design it could be a large back design it could be something on the sleeve or maybe you want a bit of everything. So that is the very first thing you need to decide. And once you've decided that, that will then help you make your decisions for how you print it, where you print it, etc. Because certain print techniques aren't available across all types of sizes and placement. So that is the very first thing that you need to decide. Step two is the type of t-shirt you want to print on. So you have to decide what kind of t-shirt you want. So is it a t-shirt that's going to be environmentally friendly? Is it a t-shirt that's meant to last long? And also who's your audience? So is it for friends and family? Or is it for your bigger brand? There are many standard brands out there that you'll probably see as soon as you start looking for t-shirt printing. You'll see brands like Gildan and Fruit of the Loom. I personally used Gildan when I first started. And then I learned more about sustainability and making your clothes more environmentally friendly. So then I switched to a brand called Continental. And Continental's t-shirts are organic and they make sure that they pay their workers a living wage, etc. So you have to decide what kind of message do you want to put across with your t-shirt? What are the selling points of your t-shirt? You also have to think about how far you want to go. So some people are happy to just put their designs on the t-shirt and leave the t-shirt brand label inside the neck. And some people want to replace it with their own. There are brands that are specifically made for printing t-shirts and they offer t-shirts that come with tearaway labels. So it's not a lot of effort, you literally just pull it out and then you can sew back in your own label. Not all brands offer tearaway labels, but all you need is a pair of scissors and it's very easy to just cut the label out and replace it with your own if you want to or you can just cut the label out and leave it blank. Step three is the method of printing that you want to use. So now you've decided your design, your size and placement. Great. So now you need to think about the types of printing that are available. When it comes to t-shirt printing, I would say that there are three main factors that you need to think about. Number one is the size of your design, which is what we spoke about before. Number two is the amount of color in your design. And number three is the amount of t-shirts that you actually want to make. All three of these will help you decide what is the most cost effective way and also the way that will make your design pop as much as possible. So there's one thing I want to stress so much. When you print your first t-shirt, depending on, I mean, this doesn't work for everyone. If you're already a very big brand out there and you have a lot of followers and you know a lot of people are gonna buy your t-shirt, then go for it. But if you're a smaller brand and you've never done t-shirts before and you do not know how much interest there is going to be, I cannot stress it enough. Do not get a big run of t-shirts. And when I say a big run, this means a lot of the time you're going to t-shirt printing companies and one of the first things I'll offer you is screen printing. And screen printing, for those of you who didn't know, is literally your design, I'm trying to think of a way that is most easy to describe it. Design is put onto a mesh screen, which is then placed on top of the t-shirt, ink's put on and it's pressed down. So almost like a stencil. And because of the fair amount of effort that it takes, a lot of companies will not offer you screen printing unless you get a minimum order. 
those minimum orders start from around 50 t-shirts. I've even seen some places that don't let you get screen printing unless you get a minimum 200 t-shirts. And for your first time round, that is an insane amount of t-shirts to get. You do not need 200 t-shirts. Even if it's a really good deal and you're like, oh my gosh, I can get this many t-shirts for this amount of price. I don't think that is ever worth it. I think if you're approaching this from the business side, you need to think about waste. You don't want to be having too much and you also need to think about dead stock. If you buy 200 t-shirts and you sell maybe 20 in the first day of launching, that's great. But then you've then got 180 t-shirts to shift and it's also a lot, a lot of storage. So I would suggest going for an option that lets you print in smaller runs. There are lots and lots of different ways of printing out there and I'm just gonna talk about a few that I have either used or know a lot about or know people that use them but like I said there are many out there and I'm going to go through very very quickly just some pros and cons of each one the first type of printing you can get is screen printing which is what I was talking about earlier um, so the downside being that usually you're only allowed to get it with minimum orders and that might not be something that is doable for you also with screen printing is the amount of color so if you are just designing a t-shirt that just has one or two colours, then it might actually end up being a more cost effective way for you. But if your t-shirt is something with lots and lots of colours and lots of different placements all over, then I would say avoid screen printing. A second type of printing that is very popular and is one that I currently use is DTG printing and that means direct to garment. So it's basically just a very large printer that you put a t-shirt into. That's the easiest way to describe it. As it is a printer, it just prints straight onto the t-shirt. Most printers don't have color limits and they actually charge you on the size of your print area instead of how many colors you're using. I'm a very big fan of DTG printing. As I said, I use it myself. The t-shirts come out very, very bright and it's also possible to print very bright colors onto dark as most printers will print a layer of white first and then the color on top. So the images will always turn out clear. The downside of DTG printing can be that some places are very expensive. Now I don't really have somewhere to recommend right now because I'm currently in between printers and I'm looking for somewhere new um, and some of the quotes I've been getting back have been insane amounts of money. You have to think about how much you're going to sell your t-shirt for and if I buy this t-shirt is it even going to be profitable for me. Another option is vinyl and from what I'm aware there are two ways of doing vinyl so you can either send your designs off to a company they will make the vinyl for you and they will send it back or if you're someone with a Cricut it is also possible to cut your vinyl at home again with vinyl I'd say it depends on how many colors you have on your t-shirt if you outsource your vinyl which is the very first thing that I did when I started making t-shirts the amount of colours that I wanted to use didn't matter because they printed it onto the vinyl and they sent it to me. Whereas if you do decide to cut and print your vinyl at home, you need to think about the amount of colours that you want to use. If you want to use one or two colours, that's fine, you just layer it. But with vinyl, you can only cut one colour at a time. So if your design has 12 colours, that means you're going to be heat pressing 12 layers of vinyl and I don't even know if that works. So again, you need to think about the amount of colours in your design. Also with vinyl, I would suggest if you do want to do it, that you should invest in a heat press. When I first started printing vinyl, I was just using a regular iron and it worked, but then I was also finding that my design started peeling off in the corners quite soon on. Some of them are very expensive, but I also got mine on eBay for about 60 pounds and it is great. I've had it for years and it is perfect. So another option, especially if you Google cheap ways to make t-shirts, will come up with transfer paper. Now this is something that I advise you do not do. Now this is me personally, maybe there are better transfer papers out there, but based on experience, the quality of printer you need to have is very, very high. I've used transfer paper for my personal t-shirts, but something that I found with that is after wash after wash, it starts to split, it starts to crack, and it isn't a very durable way of printing. So if this is a t-shirt that you wanted to make just for a one-off or two free times then it is one of the cheapest ways you can do it you can buy a pack of 10 on ebay or amazon for about five pounds all you need is a standard inkjet printer print it out cut it out iron it on but if this is a t-shirt that you want to make to sell and you want people to be able to have for a long time it's something that i would strongly suggest avoiding and another option is embroidery so this is something that i haven't ventured into yet but i want to but for sure if you're going to embroider and you're on a budget 
it is very very hard so most embroidery things are done quite small a lot of the time it's more text than actual images and from what I've seen from the printers I go through and other printers I used to go through they do per stitch and per colour so if you have a very big back design embroidery in, I would say is not the way forward whereas if you just want to embroider maybe two three words quite small on the front of your t-shirt then that is something that you can look into last option to think about is hand printing or painting and it's not an option that a lot of people go down as it is something that is very very time consuming but if you're someone who enjoys monotonous tasks labor of love etc then hand printing could be for you there are many ways you can do it some people have sheets of rubber and they carve out and they roll on and print I when I first started I actually made block prints and I didn't even do it out of anything very fancy I bought rubber and I bought wooden blocks and I cut out the shapes stuck them on the wooden blocks and each time I wanted to print it I painted the shape stuck it down painted the shape stuck it down and like I said it takes a long time but it can actually create a very nice effect and if you have the time to do it and you're looking for a very very cheap way of printing that is the way forward so you have designed your t-shirt you've got size and placement you know the type of t-shirt you're printing on and you've decided i'm gonna do dtg so the final step you need to think about is extras so these are things that aren't necessarily needed for a t-shirt but depending on if you're really trying to push your brand and you want to make it look professional these are definitely things that you should consider the first add-on that you can have is labels like i said earlier if you are interested in relabeling your t-shirts there is the option for tear away labels or you can also cut them out and with a lot of t-shirt printing companies they will offer a service where they will relabel for you now what i would say is that service is great if you're ordering a very large quantity or if you do not know how to sew i personally sew in all my labels myself and it does take a little bit more time but it's something that i enjoy doing and it's also something that saves me a lot of money i'm a big fan of if you can do it yourself then do it for as long as you can so obviously when i get to the point where i'm ordering 300 t-shirts at a time i will probably let the company label it for me but as of now i am sewing them in myself the standard way relabeling works for a company is they will charge you per label and then they will then charge you per sewing in each label to each t-shirt so it could be only 50p a label and 50p sewing in each time which doesn't sound like a lot but that is one pound added to each t-shirt that is one pound added to the end of your order amount and that is also one pound taking away from your profit so if you are someone that is able to sew whether that is hand sewing or machine sewing i strongly recommend doing it yourself there are lots and lots of good label companies out there there are companies who have their own websites and there are also a lot of people who sell labels on etsy and that's where i personally get mine made i think labeling is something that is quite important and something you should really consider i think it's definitely something that can help generate repeat sales if someone has a t-shirt and they're like this is actually one of my favorite t-shirts i wear this a lot i want to get another one and they go to look in the label and they say gildan then that's a sale loss so definitely definitely look into relabeling your t-shirts and the final extra that you can add to your t-shirt is swing tags. Swing tags, again, are just another way to push your branding out there, but it's also something that you can use to put care instructions on, prices, etc. Swing tags are probably one of the cheapest things that you could do for t-shirts, but it's something that I think is one of the most effective. So if you have a printer at home, you can make swing tags yourself, or you could also do things like buy business cards on a printing website and then just get a hole punch, punch it in the top, get some string tie it on but it's also something that takes your t-shirt to another professional level so it's something you should definitely consider doing as well yes that's all the advice i have for you today hopefully if you follow these steps you'll have a shiny new t-shirt nicely printed nice neck label nice swing tag all you gotta do is go sell a quick summary of all of the things you need to do to create your t-shirt number one is decide size and placement Number two is the type of t-shirt that you want to print on. Number three is the method of printing that you're going to use. And number four are the extras that you want to add on to make your t-shirt look that little bit more professional. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much and it made sense and something was helpful for you all. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment them down below. Or if there are more things you want me to go more in depth for, I'm happy to make another video. Hopefully with the help of this video, 
you guys create some awesome t-shirts. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!